So hello guys, welcome to episode 51 of the Switch Indie Fix podcast, a podcast dedicated to everything indie on the Nintendo Switch. As you can see, we are streaming today on um, on twitch.tv forward slash Switch Indie Fix. Uh, it took a little bit of, of messing around with, but we finally got it to work, didn't we, Daf? How are you today? I'm very good. It's a nice Saturday morning here, so all good. Yeah, good. Same here. It's feeling it's starting to feel a lot like spring in Vienna right now, but we're not here to talk about spring. We are here to talk about all of the big indie game news, uh, especially news about the Nintendo Switch. And this week we are going to be talking about the absolute pile of indie games that got announced for the Switch over the last week. And we're also going to be talking about if indie game publishing is dead. But before we do, uh, let me just tell you about our brand spanking new Patreon. If you like the Switch Indie Fix podcast and the other content we create for Switch Indie Fix, please consider becoming a Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash Switch Indie Fix and supporting us at the $1 tier. We'll get your name read out at the end of the show. Uh, and also a gentle reminder, we do need your questions. If you have any Nintendo or indie game related questions and want them read out on the show, head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash uh, SIF podcast. And if you are in the chat, Please uh, leave your questions in the chat and I will read them out at the end of the show. If there are any any questions that pop up as we, we are streaming, do let me know. And finally, if you are looking for a fun gaming community to join, then why not check out the Switch Indie Fix Discord server? Just head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. What are people talking about in the Discord right now, Daf? lots and lots of animal crossing that's right so yeah if you uh, we are uh, an indie game podcast but if you are interested in other AAA games then there's also definitely a place for you in our discord just go to switchindiefix.com forward slash discord and you'll get an invite there and actually daf um i forgot to delete this first bit off the uh the, the news section because actually we have zero news stories this week which is is what daf a very sad Baker's Dozen. It's a very, very sad Baker's Dozen. Um, we don't have any main stories. The one main story that we arguably could have, we're going to talk about in our conversation portion. Um, so never fear. We do have a lot of heads up. We do have a lot of new games of note, and we do have a lot of physical therapy for you guys. So, um, yeah, so we've got a lot to talk about news-wise. There's just not really any main gaming, or I, I should say indie game stories that I thought were worth making their own stories in the news. Um, so let's start off with... Um, you know what, let's go to new games of note first. So, the first new game of note is that Thunderful's Lonely Mountains Downhill rides on to Switch in May. Uh, this downhill mountain biking game mountain biking game mixes fast, twitchy gameplay with hilarious ragdoll-like crash mechanics. Uh, personally, I've been waiting for the game for a while. <clears throat> Don't know about you, Daft, do you know much about it? I played it before, I had it on Xbox. It was on Xbox ah, really? Ah, cool. Since the thing came out, it was really fun. Uh, you know, point. You know, we raced up, raced on mountain, making points. So it's always like a repetitive game, trying to yeah better your score and stuff. And there's different paths you can take <clears> when you go down. You know, the hard some are like you know quicker path, the quicker harder, right? So yeah. Um, so like the difference is that it's a great, uh, it's a good game for that price. I'm not sure again because I'm on Game Pass. I don't yeah, it's a hard sale. At yeah. The moment, but it's I think the fun will be a perfect game for the Switch because of. The fact of that it's it's, it's not replayable, replayability in it. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think if you're getting it for free, then obviously it's gonna be a hard sell at twenty because the the price is nineteen euros and ninety nine cent. Um, does it have like is it like a roguelite because or is it more of like an arcade? You know, each level it's is more a, an arcade. Okay, you don't really increase your you don't yeah. get any better skill. It's just no, you're bettering, <clears throat> you're bettering your own skills. Okay, you right. um yeah because. I know that there's like different bikes you can unlock that obviously have different attributes, like different speed and, and I guess, I don't know, dexterity. I'm not sure what, what else really you can say a bike has other than than speed and maybe like handling. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's definitely a cool game. It's made by Thunderful, who are the publishers behind uh, SteamWorld Quest and uh, Wonderling. I think, I think they are anyway, of Wonderling. Um, so yeah, I think it's like a well-polished game at least. Um, I think it'd be fun on the Switch. And there's leaderboards, so I mean you can always you know <clears throat> see your friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A score and stuff. Yeah, so that's like that online aspect too. Good. So yeah, that comes out on May the seventh. Next up was Merge Studio announces Spirit of the North is coming to the Switch later this spring. Uh, in this solo player uh, third person adventure game, you play as a fox and explore Icelandic landscapes on a quest of self discovery. This sounds like a perfect game for uh, John over at Indie. Uh, sorry, uh, gaming in the wild. Um, this is like another like. 
I feel like I've seen this game a lot on Twitter the last couple of years, uh, at least through like indie game devs. Oh, uh, I didn't, I didn't um, get the dev's name sadly, but yeah, I feel like they they have like a big Twitter presence where you can see you, you can kind of see how they've built the game from the start, and it's kind of nice that they've they've got a good a good publisher with Merge. Um, do you know much about the game, Daf? Not really. This is the first time I really hear about it. No. Yeah. So you like play as this this fox, and I think it's. There's kind of like a few games that are have kind of fallen into this genre uh, recently. Like they, like Faye is one of them, uh, where you kind of play as this creature that you're kind of exploring, and it's more. It seems quite like spirit spiritual in a sense, and like this, uh, the game says it's uh, on a self of. It's sorry, it's on a quest of self discovery. Um, but yeah, it looks beautiful. I think like the art style and the fox itself. It looks like it's rendered really well, and uh, exploring an, an Icelandic landscape seems quite different and quite interesting to to look around like that it's based in a semi like a realistic world at least but um yeah so next one on our new game of note is team 17 and backlight interactive have announced that golf with friends is coming to the switch on may 17th um you can play mini golf with up to 11 other people online and if you pre-order it now you get the free caddy pack dlc um yeah this seems like a great game that we should do you know if a lot of people get, end up getting the game what we should do a game night with since so many people can play all together or all together there's 12 online um yeah, for sure and yeah it is literally mini golf with like these crazy kind of levels each of the levels are themed i think they because they're um you know they're getting published by team 17 who also published the worms franchises even like a worms themed level but and i know there's nice. a, a, a pyramid and like a a, a lumber mill level uh, i watch a few streamers play it all the time because um i think it's just like an easy chilled game to play you literally all you're looking at is like the the ball you aim where you want to go but there's also like means for you to take shortcuts so instead of just you know hitting it off off the barriers and going to the hole you can like kind of chip it over and maybe take a shortcut over the um over the the golf the, the mini golf course which i think is kind of cool and it adds to like the, the quirkiness of the game but yeah that's coming on may 17th um, next one up is Annapurna Interactive is bringing Telling Lines to the Switch, Telling Lies on the, to the Switch on April 28th, which is in a couple of days time. Uh, it comes from the developers of Her Story and is an FMV thriller where the player has to watch clips of four different people and use a database to find out what links them all together. Do you know what an FMV v thriller is there? Is that a first... Um... Is that with real people, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. Like I, I actually don't know what it stands for. That was like a genuine, genuine question. I, oh. I wanted to ask you if you knew. But yeah, so it's uh, um, I think her full motion video. Full motion, yeah. So it's it's kind of like a mix between, I guess, like uh, not so much an interactive movie, but yeah, all of the the gameplay is of real, real actors and real people. Oh god, my hair looks a mess again. <laughs> of real actors and real people, and. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, 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 I think her story was the one where you were like a police officer and you were interviewing a woman in a in like a an interview room in a police station, and you had to kind of work out if she was guilty or not of a crime that she was um, she was accused of, and that was like looking back through security tapes and and things online, um, or, or in the police database that that kind of maybe suggested someone else did the did the whatever the, the crime was and um yeah they're saying that this is like that game but it's like kind of on steroids like it's meant to have a, a lot better quality um maybe a lot better acting as well so if you are into those type of games it, it does feel like a, a very annapurna interactive type of game too so um yeah that comes out on in a couple of days on april 28th and it's yeah it's on pc already right it's already yeah PC for a while. that's right yeah <clears throat> It was on PC. I'm not sure if Annapurna are just bringing, are just doing the console publishing. And uh, Daff in the chat, Nin Helix is saying, "Wow, that is what I call a proper quarantine beard." Respect. Yeah, well, I just looked long before the quarantine. And stuff. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've got one as well, but I don't think she's talking about mine. <laughs> Good. So next up is a game called Deliver Us to the Moon. A sci-fi thriller is making it is launching on the Nintendo Switch on August 14th. This is brought by um, Wired uh, Publishing. Um, and yeah, it's it looks cool. I just put down that it's a sci-fi thriller because 
I think it's it, like the art style is is like like kind of realistic graphics, like 3D render graphics, um, and yeah, looks interesting if you're into. Yeah, that's an, <clears throat> that's another game that's coming later because I think it's on coming to Xbox this week or next yeah, week. Yeah, that's correct. Like, yeah. On Game Pass, so it's, I feel like for me, like now a lot of these games are hitting Game Pass. It's less me wanting to buy them on Switch because. Mm. Do you think that's the option of buying getting them there? Do you think that's part of the deal that they do? Like for if if the game goes on X Pass, uh, sorry, what's no, it called? Game I Pass. I think it's just, it's just that they people are not developing for the Switch right away. Uh huh. Yeah. Especially a game like that, which it looks like I think the graphics are not are made better than a lot, lot of the games. Yeah, it it looks more like what you would think of a traditional like triple A or double A game. Um, so they probably have to figure out how to do the to be able to put onto the Switch. Mm, yeah, that's fair enough. Good. So, uh, but it just sucks that's like four months away from that, from other releases, but yeah, that stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. The next one I think you you shared uh, you brought my attention to was that uh, Nintendo showed off Windbound on the on their official Twitter and announced it's coming to to the Switch on August twenty eighth. Uh, what is Windbound, Daff? Think of Breath of the Wild, think of Wind Waker, mash them together, and that's essentially what Windbound looks like. Yeah. You're voyaging. I look like from island to island, finding, like, you're finding stuff to survive with, and yeah, exploring the world. Yeah, it definitely has like a survival game mechanic to it. I think like because in in the video, it was basically the you were on like some some rickety boat. The boat crash crashes onto a beach. You wake up on the beach, and then you have this beautiful island to explore. Like you said, kind of like Wind Waker slash Breath of the Wild. Um, and yeah, and I imagine yeah, part of the gameplay is you are searching for materials to rebuild your boat. Um, what did you think of the art style? Very again, the Breath of the Wild. Like, yeah, it reminded me a lot of Breath of the Wild. Mm. It's very beautiful looking. I wouldn't call it call it like a copy. It's that they have that. It has that look to it. Yeah, it's it's very colorful, very like cartoony, and like it looks good. Like, but I think someone I can't remember. I think it was a gaming contarian said on Twitter or in the Discord that. You know, it looks good, but so did... Oh, no, it was someone in uh, one of the reviewers for the site said, yeah, it looks good, but, you know, so did Pine and um, what, Decay of Late, uh, Log- Logos or whatever it was uh, It yeah. was called. Uh, so did they. So I'm, I'm kind of a bit apprehensive to how the finished game looks running on the Switch, if it does look as I good as... I never really it... liked what Pine looked like. Yeah, so. I, I did, but I feel like the more I see of it, the less I like it. <laughs> Is that game been out yet? Yeah, yeah, it's it's been out for a while. I think it came out in like uh, um, like August or September last year, and it came out with loads of problems, loads of issues, and the developers have been right. s- slowly, slowly, slowly fixing it. But um, yeah, I still don't think it's where it needs to be right now. But it, apparently, it's a lot better than it, it originally was. Um, Bunzi asked in the chat, "Do you mean sell the a cell shaded art style?" Not really. It's not really cell shaded. It's all Borderlands looking. Yeah, nah. I guess cell shaded is maybe she thinks maybe she's saying that because of we said it's a bit like Wind Waker, like that's cell shaded, right? But yeah, I mean, it's more meant a Wind Waker as the as the boat and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I, I know what you mean, Bunsy. Like it, it's it's very colorful. It's like kind of uh, yeah. So it's like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it looks interesting. It, it's definitely one to keep an eye on. I think it's interesting that Nintendo showed it off because was it on? Was it on like? Because it wasn't. It was on the Nintendo's official. It was not on the Win Nintendo's. Yeah, but it was. But they showed it off on their official site, which means I don't know if it means maybe they, um, if Nintendo is somehow publishing it or funding it in some way, uh, because I think it's weird. Like if if people don't know, Indie World now they have their own official Twitter page where they post videos of of usually of games of indie games that have been on the Indie World, uh, but this was on the official I think Nintendo of America. Um, unless unless I got tricked and it was one of these troll accounts, you know, where it's like they say it's Nintendo of America, then you actually look at their at names and no, it's like Nintendo, I'm, I'm looking right now. You're looking, Nintendo okay, okay. It. okay. So yeah, that's, so that's that's kind of interesting. If anyone in the I chat, think it's because it was announced for uh, um, Switch, because it was already announced for PC. Aha, uh-huh, okay. But my assumption is that they were now they were showing it off to say, hey, look, it's coming to the Switch. Yeah, that's fair enough then. Again, should... I think it's because they love the art style and uh, yeah, I do agree, but it is for sure. Look, it is cel shaded. Yeah, looking at it now. Yeah. Um, that it because it, I think it would remind people a lot of like Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. That look that they're like, hey, look, guys, look what's coming to the Switch. Yeah. And Nintendo probably wanted to do it over the Indies because I'm assuming 
they wanted more people to see it. Yeah, no, good. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, and then the next one we had up is one that uh, is kind of a bit personal to me because I've kind of become a little bit of a fan of them. And that is that Troglobites, who are the developers of Hyperparasite, teased their new project uh, called Ido no Yami. Um, it was literally a teaser trailer, uh, which I guess teased the logo of the of the game. Did you did you watch it, Daf? No, I didn't know about it. This is the first time I hear about it. So so yeah, so it's like a they they teased a, a video, and it, it it's just like a three D rendering of you know it's one of these masks that they wear in Japan, like you know what the, oh, the yeah, samurai yeah. wear, but it looks very very robotic, very metallic, like really cool. Like the video is all is all surrounded in smoke, like, and it slowly comes yeah, it's like out. Cyberpunk-y. Yeah, and it comes out with the the title at the end. So it's cool that they're. They are um, they're working on something new after getting Hyper Parasite out. I, I I really like them as a developer. I think like they're doing. I'm I'm not sure how well Hyper Parasite did, but I think like they're a developer from the marketing standpoint that have done, really done everything they could to make that game a success. And I really hope Hyper Parasite becomes a success because it is a good game. There is a review up on uh, on SwitchIndieFix.com, and there is me playing the game up on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and search for Switch Indie Fix, you can find uh, me playing the game there. It's a really cool game, really cool roguelike. Um, and yeah, I wonder what they're working on next because it looks very, I don't know, I guess different to what Hyper Parasite is. Hyper Parasite, I think, was like an, an ode for them to classic arcade games. And this one seems to be yeah, more along like a cyberpunk look. Um, and then, yeah, another game that I've, I've played and there's a video up on YouTube is a game called Vigor, which is made by the uh, Bohemian Interactive, who are the developers of uh, DayZ. Uh, they, they officially announced that the game is coming to Switch in summer via a founder's pack and it's becoming free to play later this year. Um, uh, did you did you have a look at Vigor or did you watch the, the video, Daf? Because I think it's a very interesting game, Vigor. Again, it's the first time I hear about it. It's like it's a free to play shooter, right? Yeah, so like it got, I can't remember when it, when it got announced. It might've been during the indie world. Um, yeah, it got announced and then I managed to get a, a beta key for it. Um, and then I played it I played it for a trying out video on YouTube, and it, yeah, it's like a it's it's like a mix of if you've ever played Daisy, it's kind of similar gameplay to that. It's like third person shooter where you are kind of strolling through this world and looking for resources, but then it also has like a yeah like a battle royale mechanic to it where there's I think you, you get dropped into a world with like ten people, and um, you yeah you you have to exit. So it's like it's like a mix of I guess a battle royale, a survival game, and if anyone knows a game called Escape from Tarkov, it's also like that. So you go in, you get the loot, and you have to escape the map with all of the loot. Um, there's no like you don't have to be the last one standing. It's like okay, you can get as much loot as you want, or as little loot as you want, and then when you decide okay, this is enough, I want to escape, then you escape. Um, and like I kind of like that gameplay, but the game just I don't know, it just looks terrible on the Switch. Like it's it's. I think it's made in Unreal, but I might be mistaken. And I think just like the Unreal games, a lot of them, they, they have this similar look where I think, you know, it just, well, nothing looks crisp. Everything looks really like fuzzy as if like someone smeared vase- uh, Vaseline all over the screen or all over the lens. And that's really what the game looks like. And you can tell as well that like the Switch just isn't powerful enough really to run it because there's no draw distance. Everything is just covered in fog. Like you can pretty much see about five meters ahead of you and then everything else is fog and obviously as you move through the fog more becomes clearer but when you're playing in like a competitive shooter game you want to be able to see as far away as you can so yeah it's, it's just it's just a strange game it's uh like i said in the video i don't really know who it's for because i feel like there are better there are better survival games on the switch there are better uh, battle royales on the switch and oh yeah when you have fortnite on it of course there is yeah and that exactly and i think that if they came and were like, okay, we've developed this game specifically for Switch, because it also is coming out on Xbox, uh, Xbox One as well, and there it looks like a hundred times better. Um, but if they were more That's like, out... sorry, I think they're already out on Xbox, it's been out for a while, I think. Yeah, so there you go. So it, it but I think if they were like, okay, this is, is we've been developing specifically for the Switch, this is the game, and they really like went in hard with it, then I think it might be good. But but just right now it just kind of feels like why what what are they making this for like maybe like a quick cash in because there are lots of um, there are lots of um, 
like loot boxes and you know like um waiting kind of mechanics where you want to build because another part of the game is you like rebuilding your your base and a lot of it is like okay now i'm building a roof okay good wait for six hours and come back or i buy these materials that let you um that let you build it in 10 minutes or whatever so there's a lot of that as well which is obviously a way f way to monetize it um but yeah anyway uh, regarding Hyperparasite, Nin Helix in the chat says, I think Hyperparasite didn't quite nail it in terms of art style. People seem to like different kinds of art styles right now, like hand-painted looks, Breath of the Wild, like Ghibli-inspired or more realistic. I don't know how to describe the, st the style of Hyperparasite, but she says in your stream, the mechanics uh, seem fun. And I'm assuming she's a sh she. It might be a he. I'm not sure. He or she. <laughs> but I think the uh, art style matches the gameplay. Like, yeah. I think that game would have looked weird in a kind of more realistic thing because you're just essentially just big black blob yeah right taking over the and idea is like either kind of like techno look to it to make sense of what's going on yeah like i i think it looks like you know those old tvs the c what is it crt or ctr tvs where like like this game everything looks she, she said she is correct okay good um where everything is um fuzzy but it's meant to be fuzzy because it's meant to look like one of these old tvs and like that's how the backgrounds are all that's how they look but i i, I really liked how the, the characters were rendered like normal like like good 3d art models um but yeah it's uh yeah i, li I like the look but i i think i know what you mean and like you say in helix there's, there's lots of different art styles out there at the minute and uh yeah lots of pe people diff like different things but yeah, moving on, uh, another game that I'm excited about is Skate XL, and it's kick-flipping its way onto the Switch this July. Are you excited for Skate XL? Um, not, I'm more excited for Skatebird, mm -hmm. because the bird is the word. Uh, it's, uh, I don't really, I don't really play much of the Tony Hawk game, so I don't no. have a like, like, oh, I need, I need that in my life again. Yeah. Um, so, and again, now there's like four, three different skateboarding games coming. So, like, you know, that was almost kind of an overload. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to keep up with which one is which as well. I think because there's like this one, the Skate XL, the Skate Bird, and there's uh, there's another one that I've seen is like a Skate Rhythm game. Um, yeah. So yeah, you it, it's kind of uh, I guess I guess people know that that people want like this this Skate Four, and they know that. Um, people are, are pining for like a good Tony Hawk's game. So I guess a lot of people all started developing skateboarding games at the same time. And uh, yeah. Exactly. And now it seems like there's going to be a lot more hitting just, you know. Yeah. Hitting the market, so. Yeah. And this one I think looks the most realistic in a way of, of the games. Like obviously Skatebird is, is a skateboarding game where you're a bird riding a skateboard. The rhythm game one I've seen is very like techno and has these bright colors. And obviously it also has like a rhythm game aspect to it. This one seems like more, yeah, realistic but I'm just worried that it's going to be, um, you know, have great video, like great trailers, but actually when you get the game, you're like, oof, this looks rough. And I think the also issue with being realistic is that, um, like, people who like Tony Hawk mm. liked it for the arcadiness of it too. Yeah. Right? Like, so I'm not sure what, how it will turn out, but hopefully for them it does. And I think it's already, it's been on in other, in, has it, has it been out on other locations yet? I'm not sure because I think this is another one that Nintendo was pushing on Twitter. So. No, it came out two years ago already on Steam. Oh, okay, yeah. I it's admit. been out since December 19th, 2018. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe someone who's listening or someone who's in the chat maybe has played it on Steam. Let us know what you think. And the final game on our new game of note is uh relic hero sorry relic hunters zero remix hits the switch on may 7th uh, this looks like a kind of fun like twin stick shooter kind of it re for some reason it reminded me of enter the gungeon yeah i'm but, get the video now and i say i agree yeah um but i think it's more like story based like it's not a roguelite or anything and it looks co-op yeah or it can be co-op mm-hmm so yeah, that's cool too. so that's coming out as well in in a couple of weeks. Why why do you think so many games got announced recently that are all coming out in May? Do you think like like because I was thinking maybe you know developers have been in in, in self isolation and they were a bit hesitant to announce release dates, uh, but now that most well I don't know most of Europe. I think also the fact of that everything got cancelled that I'm sure 
perhaps with GDC and all those locations, they mm. were planning on showing it then yeah. or showing it later in other events. But now with all the events canceled, it pretty much has been put onto them to announce stuff, right? And I yeah. guess it's... Yeah, that's a good just point. Just if you like now, because if you want to do it in May, it's almost the end of April. They have to do it now. Yeah, that's true. Right? And I think they want also people who coming out. And I think also because of stay at home, uh, dates have changed. So yeah. maybe let's say like Skate XL would have hit Switch maybe in, you know, May or June, but now it's like we extend it. Of course, they don't want to announce it then. They need yeah. to figure out what's going on first. And exactly, then now yeah. they can probably see better of like how how much work are you getting done a week and then be able to project better of when it's mm-hmm. going to come out. Yeah. Things like that. So I think um, it's a factor of just of multiple things of a lot of plans falling through and now they're like, okay, well, where can we show it? Yeah. Or when can we show it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I agree. I think that's maybe the reason why um, they're all announced now. But I'm happy it means, you know, we've got a lot of good games coming up in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, that, so that finishes off our new game of note section. Uh, let us know which game you're most looking forward to playing uh, in the future. Out of all those games, which one would you most likely pick up, Daph? Um, if people pick up the play with golf with friends, I'll pick that one up. If not, uh, uh, what was it called? I think Relics is Hunter Zero, maybe. Mm-hmm. Cause it looks like that could be a fun Switch game where you can go play a level, put it away, go back to it anytime you want. And it was class co op, but that's yeah. a bit fun. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I would say, um, yeah, Hunters, uh, Relic Hunters, and then Lonely Mountains Downhill. Um, because I haven't played it. And Bunzi says she's going to get golf with friends, so maybe we should all get it and we, we can all play together. Yeah, it looks like a fun, like, crazy like, mini golf game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So then let's go into our heads up section, which is a section for all of you guys listening uh, in like a little heads up for, for some indie game kind of tidbits, you know, updates, DLC, um, and sales. So the first one is quite a lengthy one, so bear with me. It is Dead Cells Bestiary update will come to the Switch next month and will include uh, six brand new enemies. Three of the enemies are biome specific and three are found throughout various levels at different boss cells. 11 new affixes on active skills. Eight new normal affixes, including ice, fire, bleed, or poison, grenade arrows, and more. Three new start affixes, uh, including oil and fire spreading around when a deployable trap is deployed, is destroyed, pushing enemies around when when the effect of HTE used active ends. Um, an extension duration on powers like wings, crow, and smoke bomb. Two new items, a crow bar is getting added, a portable door. Uh, the bad seed edition from earlier this year has received new law rooms and secrets for the uh, abortum and moras as well as new mobs to rebalance the beast area of the level. Three new outfits cap off the major content updates, and two are linked to the secrets and lore of the Bad Seed DLC. Um, this was like a very, I think, um, what's the word? Uh, compressed version of the actual show, uh, not the show notes, sorry, the the, the update notes, uh, the patch notes. They, they have them up on their website, on, uh, um, on the Dead Cells website. I can't remember the name of the developer. Is it Red Star, I think? Um, up there, and you can if you, you can read through it if you want because there is a lot. Uh, but this was was all compressed down. Is it a free update? I believe it is. And it's motion twin. Yeah, oh motion twin. That's right. But their their logo is a red star, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I can't I wait. I love yeah. Dead Cells, and I yeah. love what they've been doing with it. It's one of my top three indie games. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I still I still I'm haven't excited played it. To... You haven't played it yet? No. Played on one of your streams. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because uh, w- when it was on in alpha, I think it was an alpha or beta on 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 Steam. Steam. For a long time. Yeah, like I I got proper into it, like watching YouTubers play it, and I was like, oh, this is like I cannot wait until it comes to to um, switch to switch. And then it came, and I was just like, oh god, I can't, I can't, I just don't have any time to play it right now. And it's it's just kind of been on the back burner for a while. And Bunzi in chat says she still hasn't played it either. So yeah, if I stream it, Bunzi, then you'll have to come and watch. And Daft can kind of give us tips as as I get killed over and over again. That was roguelikes are for. Yeah. So uh, another little bit of uh, another heads up is that the eShop actually got an update that lets you quickly see what games look like. Um, just like on YouTube, if you hover over a game on the eShop, it will now show you a quick gallery reel of some screenshots from that game, letting players get a quick glance of potential purchases. What do you, did you know that Daft? I I. No, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I have not been at eShop in a while because I've been concentrating on one game. So, 
Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I went on, I think actually, uh, like humble brag, to redeem a code the other night and was like, I thought it had broken. I was like, why is it flicking through all these images? But uh, then I read this, I was like, ah, that makes sense. Uh, speaking of the eShop, Nin Helix says um, she just got Starman for 99 cent on the eShop. It's a puzzle game from a small Spanish developer. It's quite calming and minimalistic. I recommend it for a relaxing gaming session in the evening. That's the one I'll have to let, uh, another one I'll have to let John know about because he loves calming, chilled out games like that. So thanks for sharing, Nin Helix. Um, next up, the, the, the next two are about sales. Uh, the first one is that the Steamworld games are all, all on sale on the US eShop with savings up to 75%. So if you've been sitting on uh, some of these Steamworld games, uh, you can get them now for pretty cheap. Uh, all the ones I've played, uh, Steamworld Dig 1 and 2, and Steamworld, uh, no, what's the newest one? Steamworld Quest. Quest, yeah. I highly recommend. Have you have you played any of the other ones, Staff? Uh, I played two, and of course I would have pl I played Quest because it's card-based battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Great, Steamworld Two, Steamworld Dig Two is one of my favorite indies, like in my top yeah, three. Yeah, so. really, really good. I haven't finished it, but uh, yeah, it's great. Really uh, good Metrovania. Yeah, and speaking of like top-notch indies, uh, Celeste and Towerfall are both on sale for the e uh, on the US e shop for four ninety-nine each. That's seventy-five percent off. So, another one of my my kind of shameful admissions is that I haven't also played Celeste. So. I'm hoping, usually what happens with these sales is that when they go in the US eShop, they come to the to the EU and UK um, like a week or two after. So I'm hoping Celeste comes to the to the eShop then. If it does, I'm going to pick it up and then I'm definitely going to stream Celeste because uh, it's a... Bun go ahead. I think Bunty made a good point that we also get Towerfall and we can make yeah. another uh, um, game night with that. Cause that is a great game. I have it on, two, I think, PS4 and PC now. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get into their location. Yeah, yeah, for four ninety nine, like, yeah, why not? And, and yes, shame, shame. I know, I know, shame. I know. It's it's one of those. You know, sometimes I'm I'm kind of one of those people that you know, um, when someone tells me something's good, I'm like, okay, cool, I'll check it out. And then when I keep hearing the same thing, oh, this is good, this is good, then I kind of I kind of been I'm like, oh, I I actually don't think it's as good as everyone says it is, and then it kind of puts me off it, but. Yeah, I'm like now. There's no excuse. And uh, spoilers for a future indie game of fame episode. We we do an episode on Celeste, and the guy who came on to talk about it, you know, loved it and talked about it, and kind of convinced me to 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 be like, okay, I want to play it. And now that I'm streaming, I think it would be a great game to stream. So, yeah. And uh, then he, yeah. And then he like mentioned the chat. I liked Steam World Quest, but I'm not sure about the other ones. Which one would you be a good pick if you have no clue? If that's your thing. Um, I said SteamWorld Dig 2, hands down. Yeah. I don't think you need to play the first one. Um, <clears throat> but the second one is, a, if you like Metrovania's, highly recommend it. It's, the story's great. The artwork is great. Yeah. And if it's that price, then yeah, for sure, pick that one. Yeah, like, I, I agree. SteamWorld Dig 2. I give it, uh, there's a review up on the website in Helix. Um, if you just type in like SteamWorld Dig 2, Switch Indie Fix, it should come up. It was one of the, I think, out of three games that I've given 10 out of 10 to. Because um, it, you know, in some ways it reminded me of Breath of the Wild because there are like these these caves that you have to go into, which are are like little mini puzzles, and each one I think was just so like well designed and just lasted just long enough that you were like, hmm, this is difficult, but you got out at the right time. We were like, okay, now I know the solution. You get out, you get like you get well re rewarded, and uh, yeah, like Darth says, it had like a Metroidvania mechanic to it, which also lets you kind of play around with different upgrades. So yeah. Uh, Steam will dig too, and she says, "Dig to it is thanks, guys. You're welcome." And the final heads up is uh, an interesting one that a company called Game Gameumentary are producing a documentary about Darkest Dungeon, and it's coming on April 27th, which is on Monday. So um, yeah, I know there are a lot of Darkest Dungeon fans that listen to this podcast. Uh, Mark is probably chief among them, and yeah, so these guys are making a documentary about it. Uh, I've actually never heard of Game Inventory. Uh, I think it might be the first one that they've done. So, yeah, let's let's see how, how if it's any good. Maybe uh, maybe it is. I guess I feel like Red Hook Studios are very quiet, and um, you know they're not like usually a studio that ever tweets. Like they don't tweet often, and if I ever tweet them, I never get a retweet or anything. So I think they're quite like focused on their uh, on the game. So I think it's going to be interesting to to see how this documentary, what this documentary is like, um, because 
yeah, it's definitely an interesting there's game. There's a trailer. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a trailer out now. Yeah. If, um, yeah, and I think you can find want to check it out. you can find it on Game of Entry's Twitter, and it's literally spelt how you would imagine it to be spelt. It's game, and then you men tarry, like documentary. Yeah. And also, I think yeah, it's gonna be on like Escapist magazine now, but mm. you have to pay for okay. early access. Yeah, yeah, good. So that finishes off our heads up section, and will bring us into the final section of our news, which is physical therapy which is the new section that is music to the ears of all you Switch physical collectors out there. So first up is that PM Studios is holding a stay safe, stay home sale on its website with big savings on physical Switch indie games. Uh, there's also rare stock being added there and lots of new items to pre-order. The sale lasts uh, until July 1st and you can have a look for yourself at pm-studios.com. I think PM Studios, are the, I think, don't quote me on it, but I think they're like the the parent company for Numskull games. Um, so a lot of the, lot of the, the stuff that Numskull publishes are on sale on there. Some of them, are, some of them, I think, are up to like seventy five percent off. Uh, I know Horizon Chase, what's it called? Horizon Chase Turbo or Horizon Turbo Chase or whatever it's called. That's up on there. Their new Ministry of Broad Broadcast game is is on there, and. Um, yeah, if you're looking for some, some physical editions and perhaps some rarer ones, then you can check that out. Um, then, uh, Ninhelix, I'll, I'll answer that question at the end of the show, okay? Then next up is Strictly Limited Games are producing a physical edition of Coffee Talks for the Nintendo Switch. Um, it will include a collector's edition uh, and pre-orders go live tomorrow on April 26th. Um, Coffee Talk, I think, is like a visual, kind of like a semi-visual novel where you play as a bartender in like a fantasy world. Like if you if you ever watch Bright on Netflix, I think that's what kind of what the world is like. And you're yeah a not a not a bartender, a, a barista who has to kind of listen to these these people's problems and suggest them coffee that might might cheer them up or get them more talkative, so you can learn more about their stories. Um, and yeah, I think it yeah it includes a, a collector's edition if you're into buying collector's editions. And yeah, like I said, pre-orders go up tomorrow. Then we have Num speaking of Numskull games. Numskull games are releasing Robotics Notes Double Pack for the Switch in October. Uh, the physical edition will also come with collectible pins. And SMG Studios showed off their physical edition for Moving Out, which the game comes out in a couple of days. Um, are you going to be trying out Moving Out, Daft? I'm um, just a demo now, which I should try. I mm. know a viewer that's on Bungie really liked it, um, the demo, so I'll probably give that a try first and see mm. if I like it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it's also one that's coming to Game Pass straight away. It might be worth checking because I, I feel like uh, I've seen a lot of Xbox like marketing around the game, so that might be you might want to check it on there. Bungie says the demo was a blast. I really want to get it. Yeah, we we. If it's co-op, I may get it also on, uh, so in the Nintendo then. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, that we are working on a review for it, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, Thanks. that was our news section. Let us know in the chat, or let us know when uh, for you listeners at home or on YouTube, what the most interesting news story was. Uh, what games you might be you're most excited to see coming to the Switch in the next couple of weeks, and you can let us know by going to at Switch Indie Fix on Twitter or at Dash Tridius on Twitter. Um, I just put Twitter in Discord for you, Dash, because I didn't know what other social media you had. Oh, you can't even see it. But under under your, under your name, I made a, a banner that says your name and it has the Twitter icon and the Discord icon. So uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, good. that's where that's where you can reach us. Let us know what what games you enjoyed. And yeah, that was the end of the first section, but before we start our conversation section, I would like to tell you that this week's episode of the Switch Indie Fog, uh, Podcast is brought to you by the Switch Indie Fix store. Fancy some sweet SIF merch? Then we've got it. T-shirts, hoodies, and mugs to make you look like a legendary SIF fan. Interested? Go to switchindiefix.com forward slash store. I've missed an opportunity here because I don't have a Switch Indie Fix t-shirt on. I have a Splatoon one on today of the two cats from Uniqlo. But I always wear a, a Switch Indie Fix t-shirt for a stream. So if you want to see how, how great I look in one with my really long, messy hair, then uh, come and join me on a stream every Friday at 6 p.m. British summer time, I think. Good. So where 
is the next story. So moving on to the conversation portion. This this portion, let's see how it goes because honestly, I I didn't really know what to talk about this this uh this this on this podcast today. But um I thought we would talk about if indie game publishing is dead. And the reason this came up was because of a story on gameindustry.biz uh, where they were talking to the, uh, what's his name? Andrew, I wrote his name somewhere, where is it? Andrew Nicky Porridge. Um, sorry, not Andrew, Alex Nicky Porridge uh, about, about uh, actually about their, their, their kind of IP. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So Tiny Build is well known in, its, in the indie scene as a publisher. Argu- arguably, it was one of the first indie game publishers to be all in with the Switch, releasing Garage on the hybrid console back in May 2018 as a console exclusive. Uh, as well as Garage, the Dutch public- publishing company has also released hit indie games like Graveyard Keeper, Punch Club, Mr. Shifty and many, many more onto the Switch. Even its most well-known game, Hello Neighbor, is out on Nintendo's system. Uh, the game sees you playing as a young boy trying to sneak into his suspicious neighbor's house. Uh, the game became famous in the indie scene because the neighbor was the neighbor was supposedly smart and could learn what what you, the player, was doing. For example, if you broke in through a window, in the next round of the game, the neighbor would leave a bear trap for you under the window uh, it was also famous because of how janky the game was on release and how this feature didn't really work exactly how it was supposed to uh, however over the last few years uh, the game has been become iconic uh, sprouting spin-offs in different mediums of media a book series written by carly ann west has grossed over 16 million dollars and the game has been downloaded over 30 million times and has become so popular that tiny build has even changed its logo to the neighbor himself uh, the spurt in popularity has led to the indie dev publishers uh, to make a short six-minute pilot of a Hello Neighbor animated series. The pilot was wi- was written by West and has been watched over 11 million times. Alex uh, Nietzsche Partridge hopes the success of the pilot will lead to a streaming service or t- traditional TV network picking up the series and making a full animated series from it. Uh, in, in an interview, he said... Uh, building a strong franchise and expanding it to multi- me- multiple mediums is the way to go in this oversaturated video game world. Then he went on to say, developers need to think about h- how to build long-lasting relationships with fans through the power of intellectual property. The, to build something that will uh, still be relevant from, from now on. Uh, the, the indie game publishing business is dead, said the publisher. It's a game of brands now. And this yeah, leads me on to the question, is indie game publishing dead? Um, First off, Darth, I want to ask you, did you realize Hello Neighbor is actually as big as it, it seemingly is? Oh, I knew it was big in certain ways, but didn't realize it was going to be this gigantic. No, like I, I had no idea that there was a, a series of books written about it. Because, yeah. Are you assuming the, the kids' books? Or are they, I, like... I, I assume so, yeah, because I feel like the only like brands only get this big when they're when they're picked up by kids or young like teenagers or whatever um because yeah like the game like like i said like most of that i wrote myself so i hope you enjoyed it um but it's like i said that a lot of a lot of there was like a lot of buzz about the game when it was first announced and i think there was an alpha and a beta and streamers were allowed to play it and uh youtubers yeah like bunzi says also played it but I also remember it just not being great. Like, um, I think there's like a really funny video on IGN of uh, Alana Pierce playing it and just like lolling at the at it because it is so kind of janky, but in like in a good way. And yeah, and, I, and then after that, I kind of forgot that that it it came out. Like, I didn't even realize it was on the Switch. Like, I wrote this, oh yeah, it's on the Switch, and then I was like, actually, is it? So I had to research it, and it and it has it is it is definitely on the Switch. Um, and yeah, it's just interesting and. And I, I thought it was weird when Tiny Bill changed the neighbor to the sorry changed the logo to the neighbor because I was like why like I feel like this game they have so many other more iconic games that that like they could have chosen the logo for but then when you read this you understand why why they're doing it and yeah like I I don't know do, do you think indie publishing is indie game publishing is dead? Oh no, no? not at all. I mean look at look at Devolver Digital. Like, yeah. Team 17, Chucklefish. Um, I think that's easier now for companies to do their own publishing. 
but uh, I think it's not just the publishing you got to worry about. A lot of times it's also marketing, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a small team, like look at Stardew Valley, like <clears throat> he would not have been able to probably, I mean, it was still going to be a big game no matter what, but Chocolate Fish for sure helped him make it as big yeah. as it is today. And I think team companies like Team 17 and um, like Devolver Digital are huge platforms for mm-hmm. um, for certain games. Yeah, some games don't need publishers. Like, I don't think Hollow Knight has a publisher. Yeah. Nor does, like, Slate Aspire. But I think it's also depending on where they come from. Like, a lot of these games that come start on Steam on early access, they can start having, by like, word of mouth, to become big. Yeah. Or by Kickstarter, because they know they have a fandom already. But some mm. games don't have a fandom, so they need a publisher to do it, to help them. Like, I'm excited for Carrion. Yeah. How did I find out by Carrion? Because of Devolver Digital. Yeah. I'm not known about that game until last Devolver Digital mentioned it, right? Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I games would have gone under the would just been not heard about mm. if it wasn't for publishers, right? I think it's not just publishing; it's more also marketing. Yeah, I th- I think that's it. I think and I think that's what um. I, I think like Tiny Builder just maybe moving out of being an indie publisher now and be wanting to become more main like a, a mainstream publisher. Like obviously, this money that they're making like is crazy. And Nin Helix says uh, that she'd never heard of the game. Was it a US thing? In Germany, I heard no one talk about it. And and that's what I mean. Like, I knew about it, but I had no idea it was as big as this. And I think that's what they're kind of going on here. It's like, uh, with changing their logo, I think they're really like, okay, this this is a gold mine. We want to, like, get on it as much as we can. For whatever reason, people seem to like the game. And like Bunzi says in the chat, um, yeah, huge, huge YouTubers among streamers played it. Uh, played it so it's understandable and i guess you know we're just kind of past that age now where uh yeah we all we all watch youtubers still probably but um but like so do thousands and thousands of kids or millions and millions of kids and i guess that's where this the traction started with all these youtubers playing it and all these young young kids watching it and then buying it and then yeah and then this whole thing starts this whole whole brand starts in with younger people and we're kind of like well yeah, it's a cool idea for a game, but maybe it didn't work so well. Uh, but for them, I guess they just like playing it, and and that's where they're they're focusing this brand too. Um, and obviously, also with an animated show, like it doesn't necessarily mean that it's childlike because it's animated. Like there are a lot of animated shows that are, are, are focused to adults. Like you know, when you look at Castlevania on Netflix, that's animated, and it's definitely not for kids. But um, so yeah, I feel like. I don't think indie game publishing is dead. I think it's it's probably stronger than ever, and I'd like argue that the Switch is is part of that because I think uh, like the Switch has become the indie machine, and that's kind of like like I said, um, Tiny Build were one of the first ones I think really to 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 back the Switch when it first came out, and uh, yeah, and I think you you were seeing like these these different developers like you said like team 17 i think they're one of the best indie game publishers at the minute like they're bringing out they just seem to do everything right like they, they have good quality of games it's a variety of game and i think yeah maybe tiny builds and tiny build does as well but i also think a lot of tiny build games are quite hit, hit and miss like they have um I don't know, like Mr. Shifty when that came to the Switch, that was a little bit dodgy and like Garage was was exclusive, but I don't think it did that well on the Switch. Um, so maybe they're just like, okay, we have this this one shiny gem that is making us a lot of money. Maybe we should just brand our entire business model around selling this game and and uh, yeah. But I think his biggest argument too is that like <clears throat> I think they were not the biggest publisher. Like and I think that's the difference is that companies like um, as I said, Devolver are so huge that they can still do it. Yeah. Because they probably got like the all the good and like um, they can p- pick which indie game they want to do, right? Yeah. Like Annapurna very much picks the artsy games. They pick things that fit their mm-hmm. what they're doing, right? Yeah. A company like them probably did not get the grades, like cause you were talking about Mr. Shifty, all these games that are not top level. Yeah. So different numbers are worth it. And it's like I'm reading an article here. It's like when that game came, one uh, Hell Neighbor came out, it got panned by usually by reviews. So a lot of course people like. Re- like you know, more adults who read reviews are not going to play it. Yeah, it became popular to kids because kids enjoyed it, and they didn't have they didn't know they don't read reviews really, so they don't. And yeah, so they yeah. targeted that brand <clears throat> because of that, and that's why they got to get is it is they are kids books. Yeah, I think for him it means more that like a company his size was not worth, um, uh, maybe becoming just being a publisher. Yeah, 
Because but... you now they have 25 more titles in for development, and they already have four locations. Mm. Yeah, uh, but I think like he's right. Like I think branding is is definitely important. But I think what a lot of the other English publishers are doing is that they are, like you said, when you think of Annapurna as a brand, you think okay, they do shorter um, artsy games. So when you think of Devolver as a brand, you think okay, they do they do indie games that are kind of out of the box and a bit like you know rock and rolly, and that's their brand. And then when you think of Team Seventeen, I'm I'm more like yeah, their their brand is that they 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 have like. Oh, cool. Yeah, and they have like high quality games, uh, like and a lot of like I think a lot of their games have quite high like recognition. Like a lot of people do know Team Seventeen games, but they might not know necessarily that Team Seventeen is the publisher. But yeah, um, think, go ahead. I think a lot of times these companies too are not just publishers; they also help with like code and stuff. Yeah, they help you know bring the game to the to the end. So it's a lot of work, and especially depending on how the deal's working out. And now again with like as I said like anyone can really put anything onto Nintendo Switch in a way that's kind of sad mm. um, and also good but the thing is like it's question is how, where will it float and how high will it go if yeah. you're just doing it by yourself we have no prior like uh, game out on that con- on a console or not out on another console previously yeah on no right? like a lot of yeah. games I have on Nintendo Switch are games I had on on my PC and it's like I want on the Switch mm-hmm. right so yeah definitely um, Ninhelix says Nintendo opening up to indie publishers is proof enough that the indie is now bigger than ever. Back in the day, you could only find indie pearls on Steam, and yeah, I, I agree with that statement. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think, I and I think what you were saying is right, Daph. Like, I think Tiny Build have had some some big games, like um, like I remember when Punch Club came out, and that was like a massive thing. Like every every YouTuber I watched was streaming, I was playing Punch Club, even though arguably the game wasn't that great. And I think uh, Graveyard Keeper also came out and and because everyone was like, oh, it's like Stardew Valley. And it was kind of like w- after the Stardew Valley had peaked, like this game came out. I was like, oh, yeah, this is like Stardew Valley, but it's like funny and a bit morbid and and all of that stuff. So I think, that, and, and even Mr. Shifty, like, yeah, it didn't run well on the Switch. But I remember at the time there was nothing else to play on the Switch apart from Breath of yeah, the Wild. It so, came out very early. I think it came out, what, the first two or three months? Yeah, yeah. I think even before then, I think it was maybe one of the just the... Uh, launch games because i remember it, i remember it was like a game i was thinking okay should i buy this or should i buy snake pass and i ended up getting snake pass but um yeah. but yeah so i think you're right they do have some recognition but i think before that tiny build they didn't really have like they don't they didn't have a brand like it was like oh yeah they they they, they have these like kind of indie these these indie games that have done well on steam and and they're bringing their, their catalog over to the switch and I just, but I just think it's really interesting that this game, how big this game is, and how much money it's making for them. And I had no idea about it, like really no idea. What, I th- what I'm curious about, as people talking in the chat, say how Nintendo's been supportive of indies, with now the new consoles of other competitors coming out this this year, where pretty much like indies probably need to help bolster their sales at the beginning, especially when you don't have all the big AAA games. How will this change the outlook for Nintendo? Like. I'm curious if will Nintendo be able to keep get like still get all the great golden indies or will like now PlayStation, especially moving Shuhei Yoshida down to an indie indie games yeah. um, coordinator, will they start also now snagging up these like uh, jewels, pearls of indie games? Yeah. And will we see more now like everyone realizing how big and good are indie games? Like like even PlayStation announced that they're giving help helping these indie companies during COVID. Mm. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this whole environment changes in the next few months. It will, it will. I think I don't know. I think the Switch has always been like it's kind of been consistent with, because I I feel like there's never there's not there's not really been like a, apart from like Garage and a few others like there's not really been any indie game exclusives on the Switch because I think you know when you're running a business it's like okay I can put it on the Switch and it might be successful there, but I also should probably put it on the PlayStation because it's got like over a hundred million units sold. Um, I remember, look, <clears throat> look how many time exclusives there were um, in the last Nindies Direct. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And I think now, like, what, we're, like, three years in. Now we're seeing these timed exclusives. But I think you might be right. I think, I actually think it's going to be Xbox is going to come out uh, with, like, a strong indie kind of... I think all of them are. Really? Because PlayStation, look at when PS4 launched, they were huge on indies. They just dropped them like, like they were hot, right? Because as soon as their games came out, they didn't need them anymore. Yeah. I think they realized now that I was a big mistake. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like we'll it. See a lot of them helping. Yeah, I, I think I think PlayStation is going to be the most ex, uh, ex, interesting because at the, at the start of this generation, they didn't really have any like first party IP, and now I feel like you know it, the rumor is that they're going to launch with Horizon Zero Dawn and maybe Spider Man Two. So maybe then you might think like uh, maybe they don't they don't really want, care about indie games. Whereas I think Xbox is the one that's kind of like, you know, they bought Ninja Theory and they bought all, some of these other studios. And I, I think, I, I also think they're going to, like, I think their launch lineup will just be Halo and maybe whatever Ninja, like Ninja Theory's new Hellblade game. And then they're like, oh, but here's all these indie games that are out right now, all brand new, all on Game Pass that you can play as well with your new console. But um, yeah. I think it's definitely going to be an interesting time. I don't think indie game publishing is, is dead. Like Nin Helix and Bunzi are saying, I think it's probably stronger now than it ever has been. Um, I just, I don't know. I personally think Tiny Build are, are just moving, are just changing into something else, like a different form of publishing. I just think because indie's getting bigger, the that middle realm of publishing will be dead. Yeah. But the higher ones, like Team 17, Chucklefish, and... Um, Devolver Digital, yeah, and and Annapurna once in a while, are gonna keep it afloat. I just think that a lot of these smaller ones you've been seeing, like SMG, I think also the, they publish, right? Yeah, they publish. Um, they do, yeah. But I think for moving out, Team Seventeen is publishing it on the on consoles. Yeah, so I think a lot of these smaller companies will be like, it's not worth it on, to do it ourselves. Yeah, right. Because then we also have Humble Bundle who publishes. Like, yeah, and they they also put um, out great games. But like I think right, Data State Spire, and yeah, something else. But um, so I think like it won't be dead. It won't be dead. I think and his point is that like if you really want to make money, we need you need to find a mask. Like look what um, Shovel Knight, right? Like they built up Shovel Knight. Yeah, exactly. As the, of, of when they started, so like it's easy when you have a mask like you know Hollow Knight, to, you know Hollow Knight for Team Cherry, like things like that where it's. Like, you have something you can build on and make money off of compared to being like, Lem, here's 30 games from different pump developers. Here, here they are. Yeah. Right. And you make a bit of sales at the beginning and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, and that's what they say in the quote where they say that they want to, what was it? Um, build a long lasting relationship with fans through their IP. And I think it works in, in good ways and bad ways. Like, you know, when you start with like the angry birds, like it, like they, they've pu pushed their IP to the to the max literally and you know they released like a what was it like a i don't think it was it wasn't pixar or dreamworks but it was one of those studios yeah two movies yeah they had the movies and both of them were massive flops so there, i think there is a limit to where your ip can go and and i think it yeah i, I think like fair play to t tiny it's build so like if they um if they if they've managed to create like this massive market for themselves with this game then um then yeah then it's like why not if they're making money but, exactly uh, I think it's just I think different views I think you can kind of say that was not the right thing to say but yeah but yeah, I think it's more he, he was saying it for, as a, as his company and not as um, like in, in a whole mm, yeah I, I, I agree um, so yeah from the chat Bunty says I think it's more that those bigger indie publishers are going to become the middle ground of publishing and uh, Nin Helix asks, um, "What do you consider indie?" Uh, I mean, I got some really big, really, really big fast. Uh, so, what is what is indie today, really? And when do publishers stop being indie? <clears throat> it's a hard question. That's... I feel like we've we've talked about it often. Like for me, I don't know. For me, I always think of indie ga indie games as being made by like a smaller team with a tighter budget. And usually indie publishers I see as being develop, uh, publishers that pick specifically these sorts of games. And, you know, it might be like one, one example is like Ratalaika games. Like they're, they're a publisher that pu publish a lot of games on the Switch. And usually what they do is they, they look for developers that are, are either solo de devs or, um, you know, very small teams or the developers that have developed on mobile and they go to them and say, okay, we, we like your game. We think there's like a market for it on the switch. It's usually switch and PSV or in PS4. And they're like, 
Okay, but we know that if you want to get your game on by yourself, it's going to be quite difficult because Nintendo, like, they, they usually like you to have a publisher or have some past experience. And if it's your first game, then you have no experience. And for them, what they do is they're like, okay, we will port your game over, we'll market it, and we'll take a cut of whatever sales the game has on, on that console or, or on any of those consoles. And like that, I think, is is like is how an indie game publisher works it's like that they come in they, they take like a game that's already indie and maybe out on steam they're like or on on ios or android and then they're like okay we we have the know-how and more of like a manpower to get it onto consoles and we also have like a a, a marketing strategy and and like a social media team and we're the ones who are going to sell it and i think that's where the pub that's what an indie game publisher is it's like okay we, we take a game we like your game we don't want to change a game at all apart from port it over to a new system and we want to sell it and that's that's kind of for me what an indie game publisher does yeah is it your argument because it's like as buddy said in the chat is it it's is if the company's not is not is the company's traded like team 17 mm. is a trade it is a public company yeah it is technically a traded company but i they're a publisher, and then it's like, but there's all they're doing in the game. I think it all depends on what do you consider in the game. That's like, where does the money come from? Yeah. Or where does the um, all these uh, indie devs are more indie publisher are more like, we'll just help you. We're not gonna mm. put money into it. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, it. I don't necessarily think it comes down to how like how much money is in in the publishing company because I think Annapurna Interactive, like I think the person that owns Annapurna. Her father is like some massive like Hollywood producer who's a billionaire, and he obviously gave her the money, or she I don't know she took her own money and was like, okay, I want to make movies and I want to make video games, and she's like, all right, so I'm going to invest my money into this. So it's like you know you can look at Anna Perna and be like, well, the owner is a billionaire's daughter, or you can be look at Anna Perna and be like, oh yeah, you know they're they're an indie dev because they they have uh, because they 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 publish a lot of these uh, indie games, shorter indie games, and, and they're very artsy. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a, it's a a difficult thing to say. But, yeah, for the people at home, let us know what you consider a indie game publisher. And let us know, do you think indie game publishing is dead? Um, and, yeah, to round off the podcast, I will take some questions from the chat. So if, if Buns and Ninhelix have any questions, let me know. Ninhelix one. asked one before about... Uh, how do you think about it the taurus yeah so uh i streamed the taurus last night finished it off um it took me about five and a half hours overall uh it's like another one of those games where you know i said before where um someone says a game is good and i'm like okay cool i'm gonna check it out and then i hear it a lot like oh this game's great this game's great and then i'm a bit like oh i don't know if it's as good as what people say it is um my opinion is like it's a good game but i don't think it's like anything spectacular uh, it looks it looks amazing like the art style is gorgeous with the like voxel pixel art mixing with like this really nice shader that makes everything look almost realistic um and yeah it's it is but it might also just be me like i'm not really a, a big puzzle game fan and i think at its heart this is a puzzle game with some like light platforming um for me like yeah a lot of it, it became annoying and there was like little things that like just like like the fact that when you start off the game you can only walk and you walk at like a really slow speed and then when you do get a dash the dash is really hard to control and you're like well i might as well just walk because dashing around just means i keep crashing into things so it's probably faster that i walk and then just like little things about like you know always um when whenever you want to talk to the boat guy there's like a boat guy that drives you from island to island in the game and you talk to him and you know, you try and you, you get the same uh, text over and over. So you're spamming to get through the text and then it always has you on the no answer. So then you like spam through and you get to the, do you want to leave? And it's always like, no. And then you're like, oh great, now I have to go back through it again. And then the game, like, I think if that's consistent, that's fine in the game, but it, it isn't. Like sometimes it'll be on yes and sometimes it'll be on no. And then you like make up your mind. Like, can you just do it on one? So I know, okay, for this, I need to change up to go to yes or, or, or I need to change down to go to no. So there's just like little things, but like I'm 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 gonna review it. I might write the review tomorrow, and I, I'd say it's like it's good. I'd give it maybe like a seven, seven out of ten. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I streamed it. Like I said, it, I beat it in like five and a half hours, and then I played uh, a game called Hyper Jam, um, which I'm gonna put up as a try and out video um, next week. That was like a really cool game, so keep an eye out for that. 
But uh, yeah, if there are no more questions, which it doesn't look like, then I think we will round off the podcast. So that was episode 51 of the Switch Indie Fix podcast. Thanks to everyone who listened, uh, watched on YouTube or joined in the chat. Uh, it was really awesome of you to, to come and hang out, you two in the chat. Um, if you have, if you are in the chat and you don't follow us already, please make sure you follow uh, follow Switch Indie Fix at, on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash Switch Indie Fix. Um, we need about 14 more followers to get to our Twitch affiliate stage. So also, if you are listening to the podcast at a later date, please go to twitch.tv forward slash Switch Indie Fix and follow so we can become a Twitch affiliate and start getting emotes and start having subscribers and kind of leveling up on Twitch. That would be great. Uh, thank you, Daf. What have you got planned for the rest of your day? I have one request still. As okay. soon as you get emotes, we need one emote. Yeah. And that's Tingle. Yeah, I, I already I already had that on my list of uh, of, of emotes. Yeah. Uh, I'll be playing Animal Crossing. So nice. Yeah, that's done. Got to reorganize my island. So. Mm. Busy day yeah. then. Yeah. Good. You going back to Fire Emblem? Uh, let's see. Let's see what the fiance says. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Um, and Daf, where can people find you? Uh, Darth Stridius on Twitter, and I'm on the Discord a lot. Yes, and we are very, very close to reaching 100 members. I know I've been saying that for a while, but we are very close to 100 members. I think we're about far away. So if you if you do like us, uh, if you do want to talk indie games or the Nintendo Switch or Animal Crossing or Fire Emblem or whatever you want, we, we have lots and lots of different um, conversations on, on the Discord Make sure you go to switchindiefix.com for us Discord and come and say hi. Uh, as always, the podcast will be going up on podcasting services. It will be going up on YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, the VOD will also be on Twitch if you do want to check it out there. And uh, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting Switch Indie Fix at patreon.com forward slash Switch Indie Fix. And they are BenjiCon, Daniel Ward, uh, yeah, Daniel Ward, uh, Demi Urge MCK, Giovanni Pintamel. Uh, John Review Switch, my mum, my dad, my fiance, Kool Aid Moonwalk, Rune Storm, and Smack Maltby. Oh, and of course, uh, um, Bastian Inuk, who's also in the Discord. So, thanks you to all of them for supporting Switch Indie Fix at Patreon. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining, guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream, and we will see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye, all. <laughs>